Thank you. 
for three minutes.
already here you were expecting? They were here. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. We're selling bo celebrating both Reformation Sunday and Confirmation Sunday as Luke and Shelby are affirming their baptisms. And so again, thank you for joining us, and especially if you're watching on Facebook. Well, let us begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now join to Christ in the waters of baptism. We are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved us. And by your word you created the world, calling forth life, in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as your, as your daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit. Renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. Jesus Christ, our Lord. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Now we'll continue with our, the first verse of our hymn for today is hymn 230. Lord, keep us steadfast in your word. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, gracious Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit upon your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in all temptations. Defend them against all their enemies and bestow on the church your saving peace through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, our first reading comes from the prophet Jeremiah, the 31st chapter. The renewed covenant will not be breakable, but like the old covenant, it will expect the people to live upright lives to know the Lord means that one will defend the cause of the poor and the needy, as found in Jeremiah 22. The renewed covenant is possible only because the Lord will forgive iniquity and not remember sin. Our hope lies in a God who forgets. The prophet writes, The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors, when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest says the Lord. 
for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Here ends the reading. Please join me in reading responsibly from Psalm 46. Please respond with the bold printed sections. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains be toppled into the depths of the sea, though its waters rage and foam, though the mountains tremble in its turmoil. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be overthrown. God shall help her at the break of day. The nations make much ado, and the kingdoms are shaken. God has spoken, and the earth shall melt away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now and look upon the works of the Lord. What awesome things he has done on earth. It is he who makes war to cease. <clears throat> he breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still then and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. second reading comes from, Isaiah, from Romans chapter 3. Here Paul's words stand at the heart of pre the preaching of Martin Luther and other Reformation leaders. No human beings make themselves right with God through works of the law. We are brought into a right relationship with God through the divine activity centered in Christ's death. This act is a gift of grace that liberates us from sin and empowers our faith in Jesus Christ. Paul writes, now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being is justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law. For the law comes with the knowledge, through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction. Since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward in it as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous, and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes a boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith, apart from the works prescribed by the law. Here ends the reading. Please join in singing the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 8th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus speaks of truth and freedom as spiritual realities known through his word. He reveals truth that sets people free from sin. Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And they answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord. I can just imagine Jesus' followers sitting at the temple listening to him preach. 
and having him, tell, having him say, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. I mean, the first part seems pretty easy. If you continue doing what I tell you to do, and live according to the way that you've seen me live, you are my disciples. You have been shown the truth and made it part of your life. But then the Jews hear, and you will be made free. And they get caught up with that. You will be made free. You know, that's always a hard concept for people to think about. True freedom. And so often we don't realize all the things that we are in bondage to. Here, the Jews in ancient Israel had forgotten that they had come out of bondage in Egypt. They had been through the Babylonian captivity. And they, hadn't, and they were still in the midst of a Roman occupation. Yet they were free to live their lives, free to come and worship at the temple. But they were still bondage, their idea of what it means to find God, about what it means to be living an upright life, to be found righteous. Jesus continues on and tells us, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. I think that's pretty easy. I think most of us can agree that we have all sinned in some way, shape, or form. I know that's always the, one of the fun things I get to do at the conference. I get to take them aside and have them write a faith statement. And then we meet and talk about that faith statement. I give them two options. We could do it in a nice, gentle way. Or I could yell at them for everything they did wrong and they could leave crying. Neither of them chose that. I don't know why. But one of the questions is to talk about what is sin. Now I usually get it's breaking the Ten Commandments, making God sad or disappointed or angry. And usually I, one of the things I try to make sure everybody remembers is that sin is more than just sinning against God. Sin is breaking a relationship. That's why when Adam and Eve ate that apple, they did something to harm their relationship with God. So whenever we do something to break our relationship with God, or even hurt our relationship with our neighbor, it is sin. Anything that breaks down a relationship. It can be things that are intentional. Like, I like throwing snowballs at my sister. She doesn't like getting hit in the head. But it makes me happy when I was younger. Not that you guys are supposed to do that now. But it can also be the unintentional things of walking by somebody. I know when I was in North Dakota, I'd get asked, Pastor Chuck, why don't you like me anymore? And I'd go, why would you think that? Well, because I was driving down the road at 65 miles an hour and you didn't wave at me as you drove by. You know? Simple things like not acknowledging somebody can break a relationship even though it's unintentional. We are stuck in sin. We are stuck doing things that hurt our relationships, our connections to other people. And here Jesus tells us that if we follow his way, follow his word, follow and live in his truth, we will be made free from that cycle. Our lives will be changed on who we are. No longer will we be people who are stuck in constant sin, but we will become a people who are constantly reborn, or in the words of today, reformed, daily through the gift of baptism. When we shower, bathe, wash our hands, have a sip of water, we are reminded of our baptisms, that God has made us new, I think that's the amazing thing. I was so impressed when I heard about how the two of you crawled by yourselves all the way up to the baptismal font and told the pastor you wanted to be baptized. Do you remember that? Do you think that's the way it happened? Think your parents brought you up here? Yeah. You had no control over your baptisms. Your parents brought you forward and in their faith presented you to God said, I will bring you up to be God's child. You didn't have a say in it. God acted on you. 
before you could even do anything. God did the acting. That's what Martin Luther found so amazing in the Reformation. God is the one doing the acting in this process. We don't have to make ourselves perfect. We don't have to make sure we're asking forgiveness in the right way of God. God says, I have come down to you in the person of Jesus Christ. I can continue to come down to you in the Holy Spirit. I am seeking you out. I am offering you forgiveness and mercy. I'm the one who will forget all the sins you've ever done. God is the one acting in our midst. So on those days when you may wonder, am I good enough? Should I have done that? What does it mean I didn't call my parents when I was at college every day? God says, I'm the one acting. I'm the one making you righteous. We get to live in that faith. We get to live in that love. We get to acknowledge that God is here with us, making us righteous. So as you affirm your baptisms, as the rest of us live out our baptisms, that's the truth we're acknowledging. God is with you, now and forever. And that's the truth that we live in. That the words of his son who came down to us are guiding us into a way of life in which we are connected more fully with him. And in this we give thanks. Amen. And I will con continue with the second verse of our hymn of the day. Keep, Lord, keep us steadfast in your word, hymn 230. Now, Luke and Shelby, I'll ask you to please rise and face the congregation. Luke and Shelby have been instructed in the Christian faith and desire to make public affirmation of their baptism. Dear friends, we rejoice that you now desire to pu make public profession of your faith and assume a greater responsibility in the life of our Christian community and its mission to the world. Brothers and sisters in Christ, in holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ received you and made you a member of his church. In the community of God's people, you have learned from his word, from the word of God's loving purpose for you and all creation. You have been nourished at his holy table and called to be witnesses to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, therefore, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptized. So I ask, do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil, and all his empty promises? If so, answer, I do. I'm going to have to ask you to say it a little louder. Okay. <laughs> do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now with confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those who are in need. 
Lord, in your love, you speak to your church. Give courage and the bond of love to all who gather here in your name, that this love may turn toward you and our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, guide with justice. Inspire leaders to be tr- for truthful conversations and wise policies, the decisions, that the decisions that are made are good for all. Lord, in your mercy. And in your love and care, you tenderly care for your children and nurse them to health. Bring relief to all those who are in need of healing, hope, and restoration this day. We especially pray for Connie, Cheryl, Arlen, Faye, Wanda, Paul, Steve, Gary, Helen, Terry, Linda, Roger, Doug, Marvin, Cheryl, Ricky, Lisa, Mary, Brad, and Dylan, and all those we name in our hearts. We also pray for all those who are grieving this morning, the absence of loved ones. We especially pray for the families of Rose Nelson, Darla Harnack, and Willis Beckman. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, we give thanks for Martin Luther and all who seek to reform and renew your church. Give us courage to live out your gospel, revealing your love until the days on earth have ended. We especially ask that you would strengthen Luke, Shelby, and Daniel as they seek to live out your life and your truth. Lord, in your mercy. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. It's now Luke and Shelby. I'll ask you to answer in turn. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant of God that was made with you in holy baptism to live among God's faithful people? to learn, hear his word and share in his supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of our Lord Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. So, yep, go ahead. And Shelby? Now, people of God, do you promise to support these brothers and sisters and pray for them in their life in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, through water and the Spirit, you have made these young men and women yours, your own. You forgave them all their sins and brought them to newness of life. Continue to strengthen them with the Holy Spirit and daily increase in them your gifts of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord the spirit of joy in your presence, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And now we come to the time that every conferman loves, the laying on of hands. So I'll ask you to move to the middle of the pew. And I'll invite your parents and godparents to come up and lay hands on you. And we'll begin with Luke. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Luke the gift of your Holy Spirit, confirm his faith and guide his life, empower him in his serving, and give him patience in suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. And now Shelby. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Shelby the gift of your Holy Spirit, confirm her faith and guide her life, empower her in her serving, and give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Now God's peace be with you all. And now we congratulate you on affirming your baptisms. If the congregation would like to applaud. And now you may be seated. So this is one of the hard parts about the pandemic is typically this is the time in which we would place the offering plate in your hands. And now that you are seen as adult members of the congregation, it's your opportunity to give to the ministry of the church. But instead, we have an offering plate in the back <laughs> that you can place your offering in. Or if you prefer to mail it in, that's in your, the address is in your bulletin. But again, we also want to thank everybody else who has supported the ministry of our churches. Let us continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, again, thank you for joining us today on Facebook or on FM radio if you're listening outside. Um, a few announcements. We will have our Bible study on the St. Olaf Facebook page at 9 o'clock on Wednesday morning. Confirmation will be at 2.40 on Wednesday also. Next week will be All Saints Sunday. It's the 1st of November, so it's Nod Day. So we'll begin at St. Olaf at 8.30. Our Savior's at 9 and English at 10.30. St. Olaf will have Sunday school at 9.15, and here we'll have it at 9.30. Um, again, things may change with COVID-19, so keep an eye on, the face, on, your face, on our Facebook pages to see if there's any other announcements. Also, next week, you have the opportunity to show up an hour early and do some private meditation if you so desire. Or you could change your clocks on Saturday night as daylight saving times ends. Your choice. Um, also, the Shetek Lutheran Ministries is doing their quilt sale at shetek.org. You're invited to support them with that. Um, Darla Block and the youth are still selling Christmas wreaths, and you're trying to make an order this week, so you can give her a call today about ordering a Christmas wreath. Um, Westbrook Women's Club will do an Election Day grab-and-go food event at the Community Center. And our mission of the month is a Walnut Grove Dovery and Walnut Fire Departments and the Walnut Grove Ambulance Squad, if you'd like to give an extra gift for them. And any other announcements? Okay. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Lord, look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let us close with the third verse of hymn 230. Lord, keep us steadfast in your word. Shelby, I'll ask you to stand for one final time. Usually we have the confirmands greet you as we go out of the worship service um, due to trying to do social distancing. That's a little hard to do today, and it's a little bit cold outside, so I'm just going to have them turn and face everybody and greet you now. <laughs> a little different, not as exciting, but functional. Well, let us go in peace and serve the Lord. We will. Thanks be to God.